I was talking to some people about one of the most frustrating things ever to happen in the world. When it comes to wanting to improve your health, when it comes to you wanting to go and get to your goals, and that is when you hit a weight loss plateau. The first thing is that, well, why have you actually got a weight as a goal? A number on the scales as a goal. Cool, it can be great to get under 200 pounds, to get under 180, whatever it is. That's cool. I know you want to get onto that number. Why? And what is actually happening when you see those scales drop and then suddenly they stop? Or even worse, they go up. Well, here, here are seven things. Seven things to take into account. When you see those numbers stall, when you see your weight stalling on the scales, what is actually going on? The first one is that you are only looking at the scale weight. You're only looking at a marker of how much gravity is pulling you down to the ground. Are you using the same scales? Chances are you are. Chances are you're also weighing yourself at the same time of day using the same base underneath the scales, whether it's the bathroom floor, kitchen floor, living room floor, whatever it is you weigh yourself. Now, you're not going to lose weight every single day. When you drop weight, or fat, whatever you want to say, usually when you look at a scale, when you look at a graph, it goes down, up, and it slowly goes down as it's going up as well. So if you look at average over time, you'll get a straight line. But it will fluctuate during the day. It will fluctuate based on the time of day. It will fluctuate even the time of the month for both guys and women. Number two. You may have eaten later the night before. As I said about the fluctuations, you may have more food simply within your digestive system. Meaning that there's going to be more weight in your body. You're going to be holding more water in your digestive system, trying to digest and process that food. Maybe you haven't gone to the toilet the, the, before you weighed yourself. So many different things to take into account. Number three. Maybe the day before you had some food that was a little bit saltier. The sodium in the food may have meant that there's more water retention in the body. And that is not, that is not to say that salt is bad. Salt is good for you. We need it for our bodily functions. If we didn't have it, you're going to cramp up. Our systems are not going to work. And to be fair, everything is just going to fail. Number four. Number four is that you trained really hard the day before. Weight training, whilst weight training over time, we know it can make you lay new muscle fibers, get bigger. You won't get too big too soon, trust me bro. But weight training, weight training can make you hold water within the muscles. It can bring water into the muscles, it can suck those glycogen stores into the muscles and help your body with refueling and repairing those muscle fibers. There's also inflammation and water retention if you had a hard session. So if you've done some really heavy squats, just log that. Log that when you weigh yourself the next morning. Because it may not be that you've put on weight, you may have simply crushed a workout, really crushed a workout, and you've got more water in your system. Number five. The fifth one is something we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is stress. Said about the workouts, essentially that is just stress. The more stressed we are, the more the body wants to hold on to weight by putting more water retention within the system, really high cortisol levels. We have different types of stress. There's financial stress, there's the relationship stress, there's work stress, there's family stress, then there's physical stress we put on ourselves within the gym environments. So much stress we have in our bodies. Maybe you didn't get as much sleep during the night. Maybe it's hotter outside, so it's impacting your sleep. So your stress levels are not lowering as much. Maybe you didn't get your morning meditation in. All these things are going to add up when it comes to your weight when you jump on that scale. There's going to be more water retention within the body. So once again, bear that in mind. The sixth one is that 
I mentioned time of the month for guys and for women. Yes, it will matter for guys as well. Obviously, we don't have periods, but your weight can fluctuate. But women, ladies, when you have your period, whether it's before or during, you will notice changes in weight. That can be so frustrating, I can imagine. I've had multiple clients all around the world that have had the same issue when it comes to their period. Some people won't put on any weight. Lucky bitches. Some people are only going to put on a couple of pounds. Mm. Cool. Some people I've seen put seven, eight, nine pounds on. Add insult to injury. They're also craving more sugar. And guess what? Body's using more sugar as well. Maybe we should give it more sugar. Ever thought of that? The seventh one. The long and short of it. When it comes to why you're having a weight loss plateau is that you just haven't been consistent in all the areas. You haven't been consistent with your exercise. You haven't been consistent with your sleep and your stress management. You haven't been consistent with your food intake. However you want to measure this, whether it's tracking, whether it's just being aware of it, whether it is getting accountability from a coach, however it is done for you as an individual, you just have not been consistent enough. When it comes to your weight loss plateaus, have a think about these seven things. If you want to talk further, you know where I am. Drop me a message. And we can see if there's any other underlying issues, but honestly, these seven things, when it comes to your weight loss plateau, pretty much clear up Every single thing I've been asked about, why Ollie? Why am I not losing weight? I'm doing every single thing I should be. Is that really the truth though? Thank you for watching.